Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> yourself, man. In the last few minutes, the Defence Secretary, Gavin Williamson, has been sacked by the Prime Minister. Well, let's get the very latest from our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, who is at Westminster. Laura. Thanks, Sophie. Well, as you say, about five minutes ago, Downing Street released a rather terse, short statement revealing that Defence Secretary Gavin Williamson, who'd been in his post since the end of 2017, has been sacked because the Prime Minister has lost confidence in him. Now, what this is all about, many of our viewers might remember, last week, extremely unusually, reports of a National Security Council meeting emerged into the newspapers, into the Daily Telegraph. They had details of conversations among the most senior cabinet ministers about whether or not to award Huawei, a Chinese telecoms firm, a part in building the next stage of our telecoms network, the 5G superfast broadband. It's something that the government wants to do. They've been warned by some people not to use the Chinese firm Huawei. But the Prime Minister and her colleagues had discussed allowing them to take part in a limited way. But the fact that that decision made its way into the press didn't just raise the eyebrows here at Westminster. It appalled people, including many government ministers and including Number 10. Since then, the hunt has been on for the source of that leak. Now, at the time, Gavin Williamson's team emphatically denied that they had anything to do with this whatsoever even though privately some people were whispering that they believed he might have been the source of the story. But after what has been a very serious investigation done by Number 10, by the Cabinet Secretary Mark Sedwill, who's also the National Security Advisor, they have in the last few minutes released a statement saying that Gavin Williamson is out over what seems to have been his involvement in this. Now, I should say we have not heard from Mr Williamson or any of his team yet, but this is a significant loss to Theresa May, not just because it's the instability of losing another one, yet another one of her senior ministers in such a period of political turmoil, but also Gavin Williamson was one of those ministers who has been loyal to her. He has been somebody who she's been able to count on in terms of his support and he is somebody who I think her, his, his loss will be felt in number 10 because these days frankly there are not very many people in the government that Theresa May had been able to rely on. Gavin Williamson's sacking is not just a blow for him but it is another blow for the Prime Minister, no question about that. Well, significant development tonight Laura and we will be back of course to you with the latest on this breaking story later on in the programme. For now thank you. Let's go back now to our main breaking story this evening. The Defence Secretary, Gavin Williamson, has been sacked by the Prime Minister. Downing Street said the Prime Minister asked Mr Williamson to leave the government, having lost confidence in his ability to serve. Our political correspondent, Ben Wright, reports. Are you or any of your officials behind the Huawei link? How are you? Uh, absolutely not. Ambitious, young, self-assured, Gavin Williamson was a rising star of the Tory party, with his sights trained on number 10. But his career is now in tatters, sacked over leaks from a National Security Council meeting. Yesterday, he denied doing anything wrong. I never have leaked anything from the National Security Council, nor would I ever leak anything from the National Security Council. Gavin Williamson became an MP in 2010. He was given a role in the Northern Ireland office and became an aide to David Cameron. From 2016, he was given the job of Conservative Chief Whip, the enforcer of Tory MPs, the maker and breaker of other careers. He kept a tarantula on his desk, a message to Tory MPs not to mess with him. Gavin Williamson was catapulted into the Cabinet in November 2017 after the resignation of Michael Fallon. He had no military experience but relished the role, despite gaffes that brought derision. Russia should go away, it should shut up. But now he's gone, one of the most dramatic ministerial stackings for many years. Ben right there. Well, let's go back now to our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, in Westminster. This news broke just half an hour ago. The Prime Minister saying she's lost confidence in his ability to serve. Mr Williamson still denying, though, that he did anything wrong. He did, Sophie, although the Prime Minister put in her letter that she's published to Mr Williamson saying that there was no other credible explanation for this very serious leak, that there was clear evidence that pointed to him being the source of it. I've just spoken to him in the last few minutes, and he's absolutely categorically still saying that neither he 
he nor his team had anything to do with this information coming from the National Security Council, that he would not leak from the NSC, nor would anybody who had been involved in working with him as the Defence Secretary. So still absolutely sticking to his story that it was nothing to do with him. But clearly the Prime Minister, after such a serious and unusual leak, from an organization like the Security Council, which is sort of the most secret of secret government committees that cabinet ministers attend, clearly she felt that she had to take action in this case. It will be very interesting in the coming days to see how this all plays out with Gavin Williamson still trying to stick to his side of the story. And remember, just to attend these meetings of the National Security Council, cabinet ministers have to sign the Official Secrets Act. And in theory, breaking that act is something that is against the Law. But politics moves very, very fast. Gavin Williamson has in the last few minutes been replaced by Penny Mordaunt, who was the International Aid Secretary. She becomes the first female Defence Secretary and in her shoes a promotion for another young rising star of the Tory party, Rory Stewart, who was a more junior minister, who now moves into the Cabinet for the first time, replacing Penny Mordaunt. So a new look Cabinet in part at a time of intense political difficulty for the Prime Minister, still strong enough to move her ministers around, perhaps. Laura Koonsberg in Westminster with the very latest there. Thank you. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when we first practice to deceive. That could be the career epitaph for the man who once bragged about keeping a tarantula in his office when he was the much feared government chief whip. Gavin Williamson went from fireplace salesman to one of the highest offices in the land. As Defence Secretary, he told Russia to shut up and go away and sent a naval vessel to the South China Sea to teach Beijing a lesson. Now he has been taught the harshest lesson of them all for an unprecedented leak which triggered the collective fury of spy chiefs and political leaders. Let's go now to our political editor, Gary Gibbon, in Westminster. Gary. Well, here's the uh, letter of dismissal from the Prime Minister to uh, Gavin Williamson. It pretty much suggests that the inquiry that was going on into the leak uh, had not been getting his uh, full cooperation. In fact, I, I think reading between the lines, I think the word slippery uh, comes to mind in terms of how his conduct was seen by Number 10, by the Cabinet Secretary, uh, who was leading that. They also say in this uh, letter, uh, Number 10, that they ended up turning up evidence that uh, Gavin Williamson uh, had done the dirty deed itself of leaking information. Gavin Williamson has just this second had a, a, a letter put out as well, his reply to the Prime Minister saying, I strenuously deny that I was in any way involved in the leak. Uh, likewise for his staff, he says. And, and uh, he suggests the thorough and formal inquiry, unlike the one that's been going on in his uh, eyes, uh, would have vindicated him. I think uh, Gavin Williamson, it has to be said, was fairly un un unlucky in a sense that this was escalated in the way that it was. Uh, you have a very security conscious uh, prime minister and a cabinet secretary who I think played some of the initial roles in escalating this whole thing, who also happens to be extremely uh, 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 au fait with his security issues uh, and very interested in them and the national security advisor to the government. He couldn't have picked a worse cast uh, if he was going to try and get away with this, which of course he uh, denies ever uh, having done. I think what the Prime Minister will hope has maybe been achieved here is that an awful lot of ministers who are going around uh, freelancing in many ways, uh, quite often doing things that would uh, get you sacked, uh, that this might make them all a bit more manageable, make them think that they are not unsackable. It's far from clear whether it will do that. It is, of course, uh, one of many uh, departures from government that has happened. And they are all happening from a government that is headed by a prime minister who everybody knows is not going to be around for that much longer. I'm pretty sure Gavin Williamson, not so many weeks ago, was quite confident his political career would outlive hers. Where should the finger of blame point in the Huawei leak? The Defence Secretary ignoring questions yesterday as he left Downing Street. Today, he was summoned by the Prime Minister and confronted with evidence that he had leaked the information from the National Security Council. In her letter of dismissal, the Prime Minister wrote that all those attending the relevant National Security Council meeting have answered leak inquiry questions, engaged properly, provided as much information as possible to assist with the investigation and encouraged their staff to do the same. Your conduct 
has not been of the same standard. Now, the Prime Minister wrote, there was compelling evidence suggesting your responsibility for the unauthorised disclosure. 18 months ago, when Gavin Williamson got the job, he was said as Chief Whip to have recommended himself to Theresa May for promotion. Is it hard recommending yourself for the job? I mean, the military found him bumptious, too keen to make sweeping remarks. Admirers had once talked about him as a leadership contender. His reputation made as David Cameron's eyes and ears in the Commons, and then Theresa May's Chief Whip, rejoicing in his Machiavellian role, starting a speech to conference with these prophetic words. The peddling of secrets, dark arts, the odd inducement, or even threat. But conference, please rest assured, some of this is fiction. Gavin Williamson played a central role in hooking the DUP into supporting Theresa May's government after the snap election in 2017. The then Cabinet Secretary very much backed that mission. His successor, Sir Mark Sidwell, played a central role in escalating the leak inquiry to a sacking offence. The International Development Secretary, Penny Mordaunt, becomes the first woman Defence Secretary, a lift to her leadership ambitions. Another with leadership ambitions, Prisons Minister Rory Stewart joins the Cabinet in her old job at International Development. Should there now be a police investigation into Gavin Williamson? These are matters for National Security Advice from the Prime Minister. Thank you. Number 10 will hope Gavin Williamson's sacking shows the Prime Minister does still have authority she can wield over freelancing ministers. But the record-breaking rate of ministerial departures, and the fact the leak happened at all, rather undermines that. Gary Gibbon, our political editor. Well, Tom Watson, Labour's deputy leader and a former defence minister, joins us now from the House of Commons. Uh, Tom Watson, I mean, Gavin Williamson has written, written a letter saying that actually it wasn't him. Uh, the Prime Minister's letter is utterly damning. Uh, is it churlish to ask who you believe? No, uh, actually I think he deserves to clear his name if he can, but clearly the Prime Minister thinks that he's uh, breached uh, the Official Secrets Act. If a civil servant had done that, they would be prosecuted. And so I think there should be a criminal investigation into this and the law will establish whether Gavin Williamson is telling the truth or not. So you're saying that he should actually possibly eventually clear his name in court? What the Prime Minister is effectively saying is, as Secretary of State for Defence, uh, he's, he's breached the Official Secrets Act. I remember the briefing myself. I, when you're a minister, you are deemed to be, uh, uh, to have signed the Official Secrets Act, whether you do or don't, uh, did or, whether you actually sign the piece of paper or not. Uh, and she, she is basically alleging that he's broken the law. And in those cases, the law must apply to everyone, uh, depending, no matter what their status. And to leak such sensitive information you know, pertaining to the defence, to the, to the safety of the realm, as defence secretary. That in itself is perhaps the most shocking about this, isn't it? it I, I can't think of a similar episode in my political life. And, and I, that, that's why the letter of dismissal was the most brutal uh, sacking letter I've ever seen in my uh, time in Parliament. Uh, and rightly so if he did this. Um, it's a very serious allegation. He, he would know that leaking information from that particular committee is just not done and I can understand why the Prime Minister and the Cabinet Secretary were so concerned about it. Should this, uh, the Prime Minister's evidence be tested in a court of law and should he be found guilty? Should he go to jail? Well there are two levels here. I mean obviously you serve uh, at the discretion of the Prime Minister and she's clearly decided that uh, uh, the, uh, at least one bar has been passed that he's not been cooperating with the inquiry. But the central allegation of her letter is the evidence suggests that he has breached the Official Secrets Act. And, you know, civil servants, very high profile civil servants, have gone to jail in the past for leaking information. If he has done that and he deserves to be able to clear his name, uh, but if he has done it, he, he should be dealt with it by the courts. And uh, the, the obvious way to, do, to deal with this is to launch a criminal inquiry. So jail is on the cards? 
Well, I, he deserves justice, and uh, but people, justice has to be applied equally. And you know, the prime minister can't just accuse him of law breaking and leaking secrets without the obvious uh, next step, which is a criminal inquiry. Mine, as uh, Gary Gibbons suggested in his piece, this also gives the prime minister, a, you know, a, a, a rather you know timely uh, ability to crack the whip and create a little bit of discipline in her cabinet, discipline which has been woefully absent in the past. So in that sense she could turn this, despite the embarrassment of it all, to her political advantage, couldn't she? Uh, she, she might do, but I, I honestly don't think, uh, and she will have done this on advice, and she would have been given the uh, response to the uh, leak inquiry. Uh, no Prime Minister would have a choice in this. If, if the inquiry showed that the overwhelming evidence suggested that uh, he was the leaker, she's got no choice but to sack him. OK, Tom Watson, thank you very much indeed. Now let's go back to our top story, the sacking of the Defence Secretary Gavin Williamson following an investigation into leaks from the National Security Council. Mr Williamson denies being the source of the leaks. While well, the Chairman of the Defence Select Committee, the Conservative MP Julian Lewis, is in Westminster for us now. Julian Lewis, who do you believe, the Prime Minister or Gavin Williamson? I'm not in a position to make a judgment on that. Uh, all I can do is talk about the defence and security issues involved in the leak and perhaps make some comments that might interest you about Gavin's tenure as Defence Secretary and Penny Mordaunt's prospects as the future Defence Secretary. OK, we'll talk about those in a minute. But how serious is it? And the Prime Minister's letter, which I'm sure you've seen, is pretty damning. How serious is it for the Defence Secretary, the man charged with defending our nation, to be, to be charged like this? Well, it's a matter for extreme censure for any cabinet minister to leak from any cabinet committee. I know that there's a lot of hype about the fact that this was to do with a highly sensitive issue involving a Chinese telecommunications firm and the future security of the country. But as far as I can see, nothing was leaked of that nature. What appears to have been leaked is the issue about which ministers supported allowing this company to penetrate our critical national infrastructure further right. and which ministers didn't. That is a political leak, if you like, rather than a security leak. But having said that, it is obviously a sackable offence for any uh, cabinet minister or anyone else to leak the... Uh, contents mm. of a cabinet committee meeting. Well, you call it hype, but there were any number of uh, spy chiefs and military chiefs who were appalled by the fact that this information was leaked and who will be appalled by the fact that it was defence minister, their former boss, who did it. I can only repeat what I've just said. There is a difference between uh, leaking issues about the support for a policy or the opposition to a policy and leaking top secret information. Having said that, it was still a sackable offence and if Gavin Williamson did it, then he deserved to be sacked. There are some uh, you know, military chiefs and spy chiefs who said, you know, we should go after this leak, we should have a criminal investigation. So should the evidence that the Prime Minister was talking about in her letter now be tested in a court of law? That's a matter for the lawyers, not for me. I'm here to talk about the defence aspects of this. OK, and what can we expect from uh, Penny Morden, the first female Secretary of State for Defence, to take yes, this well, job? Well, I'd like to say, first of all, that I think Gavin Williamson did a good job as Secretary of State for Defence. He successfully resisted mad ideas like destroying our amphibious capability, and he successfully fought off attempts to make further drastic cuts in our conventional armed forces. Okay. Penny, I think, has a splendid background. She is a highly committed naval reservist. She is somebody who represents uh, one of our main naval port towns mm. and she is somebody who brings the maximum amount of prior knowledge and good judgment to the post and okay. I very much look forward to working with her. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Julian Lewis. Voters have triggered a by-election in the seat of an MP who was jailed for lying about a speeding ticket. Fiona Onasanyo narrowly won her Peterborough seat for Labour in 2017 and continued to sit as an MP after her party expelled her following her conviction last December. Within the last hour, it was announced that more than the required 10% of voters in the seat have signed a recall petition. Anya Pop is in Peterborough for us now. Anya, this is historic, isn't it? 
Well, yes, a bit of political history has been made here in Peterborough tonight. For the first time ever, voters have sacked their MP. Fiona Onasanya has lost the position to stay on as their MP here. It's all sparked by a conviction for perverting the course of justice after she lied about a speeding fine. Earlier this year, she was sentenced to three months in prison. And Labour kicked her out for this. And the conviction also meant that a petition was started where constituents here could have their say as to whether they wanted to, her to stay on. And in the last hour, we found out the results and they have spoken quite clearly. Nearly 20,000 people signed the petition to sack Fiona Onasanya as their MP. That's one in four voters here, almost three times the amount that was needed. Now, we spoke to a few people in the high street here in the last few hours and here's what they had to say. I think if somebody's corrupt enough, um, you know, to do something like that and lie, then obviously they shouldn't be in Parliament. I know it's wrong. She was convicted against the law. You shouldn't do this, an MP. But um, as I've said, there's far more in the in the political parties. The people have been fiddling um, their expenses and flipping the houses, and you know, they, all these things have gone on. Well, what next? There'll be a by-election coming up and the two main political parties are already facing up for a battle. Labour narrowly got the seat off the Tories in 2017. And one of the party that's eyeing the seat, they've already confirmed they're eyeing the seat, is the Brexit party. And who will they field? Well, the, the, they haven't confirmed anything yet, but perhaps it will be their, their leader, Nigel Farage. Is he eyeing up another go at winning a seat in Parliament? Back to you, Cathy. Anya, thanks very much. After ministerial dissent over Brexit and seemingly endless leaks from cabinet meetings, it had become hard to work out exactly what amounted to a sacking offence in the government of Theresa May. Well, today we found out the Prime Minister said she had no longer full confidence in Defence Secretary Gavin Williamson after an investigation into a leak from a top secret national security meeting. Mrs May told him there was compelling evidence he was responsible. Tonight he was still insisting it wasn't him. Scotland Yard may yet be asked to get to the bottom of that. His replacement will be Penny Mordaunt, formerly International Development Secretary and Roy Royal Navy Reservist. She'll be the first ever female Defence Secretary. Only yesterday, Gavin Williamson was insisting he was innocent. Sir, are you or any of your officials behind the Huawei link? How are you? Uh, absolutely not. But the Prime Minister had come to a different conclusion. Asked by MPs today about discussions over Huawei, she seemed to hint that any breach would be treated with the utmost seriousness. I don't think you can describe me as somebody who has been lax in relation to national security. Well, thank you Just moments time. later, she headed back to Downing Street to tell her Defence Secretary he was fired. In her letter, she was withering, telling Gavin Williamson she was concerned by the manner in which you have engaged with this investigation. While other ministers all answered, engaged properly, provided as much information as possible to assist with the investigation, your conduct has not been of the same standard as others. The latest information she went on provides compelling evidence, suggesting your responsibility for the unauthorised disclosure. No other credible version of events to explain this leak has been identified. Gavin Williamson in his reply said, I strenuously deny that I was in any way involved in this leak and I am confident that a thorough and formal inquiry would have vindicated my position. I appreciate you offering me the option to resign, he went on, but to resign would have been to accept that I, my civil servants, my military advisers or my staff were responsible. This was not the case. But one minister promoted in tonight's reshuffle defended Mrs May's actions. And was it right for Gavin Williamson to get sacked? I take very seriously the views of the National Security Advisor and the National Security Council as a important institution and I think although I wasn't privy to the internal investigation I have enormous confidence the National Security Advisor and the Prime Minister have followed the correct process and know what they're doing. It's a super camera phone. It's super the leak concerned a highly sensitive decision as to whether the Chinese tech giant Huawei should be involved in the rollout of 5G in Britain. The Prime Minister said to favour the idea 
The National Security Council discussed it last Tuesday. The next day, details about that discussion appeared in the Daily Telegraph, an unprecedented leak. The Cabinet Secretary and National Security Advisor Sir Mark Sedwill demanded any minister responsible own up. Several, including Mr Williamson, denied being involved. On Saturday, the Daily Mail reported that Mr Williamson tried to blame Mrs May's de facto deputy, David Liddington, but it emerged he wasn't even there for the discussion. Tonight, Penny Mordaunt was appointed to replace Mr Williamson, the UK's first female defence secretary. She wouldn't be drawn on any alleged wrongdoing by her predecessor. The Prime Minister's made her decision. What I'm focused on is getting on with the job. And it's a huge privilege to be asked to work with the best armed forces in the world. As Chief Whip, charged with party discipline, Gavin Williamson notoriously kept a pet tarantula in his office. A key ally of Mrs May, he signed the pact with the DUP after the 2017 election. But when promoted to Defence Secretary, his blunt speaking raised eyebrows, such as this comment after the Salisbury Novichok incident. Frankly, Russia should go away, it should shut up. Labour says if he was behind the Huawei link, sacking him isn't enough. There should be an inquiry and there should be a criminal inquiry. The facts could be put to the investigation team and if it reaches the right threshold, it'll end up in court. I mean, after all, the law must apply equally to everyone. But Tory allies backed Mr Williamson. It does seem bizarre to me that all of a sudden the government's made a stand over one issue when there are many, many other issues when government ministers have clearly broken every single rule in the book and nothing seems to happen to them. But a defence secretary accused of leaking secrets from the National Security Council might be considered altogether more serious. Certainly that was the view taken by the Prime Minister tonight. Libby Vina, News at 10, Westminster. So Gavin Wilmington becomes the 38th member of Theresa May's government to have left in just over 12 months. Quite a record. <laughs> Robert is here to talk us, reflect on that and mm. talk us through what might come next. Now, you've spoken to Gavin Williamson. Well, we had a text exchange as I was preparing my show tonight. And, you know, it won't surprise you to hear that what he said to me was that he feels he is innocent and you know as you know he's also been saying that had there been a full and transparent inquiry he would have been cleared now whether or not you know his hopes or fears come true in that respect we'll have to see again on my show tonight the Lib Dem deputy leader Joe Swinson but also Jonathan Powell who has attended the National Security Council actually when he was working for David Cameron they both said there has to be a police inquiry in theory leaks from the NSC are, is a criminal offence and therefore it is a bit odd some would say that if she has said she's got enough evidence to sack him that she doesn't think there's enough evidence for a police investigation. We'll just have to wait and see what happens on that front. But in the meantime, she's made a very powerful enemy. I mean, one of the things quite interesting, we just heard Ian Duncan Smith saying that he thought that it was weird that he'd been sacked when other ministers had breached other rules and not been sacked. Gavin Williamson has allies. And it is striking to me that she doesn't appear to be as concerned as she was, say, six months ago, that enemies are being made on her back benches and I suppose that's because she also knows that at some point she's going to go and therefore she's got nothing to lose. A couple of quick points. How likely do you think it is that a criminal investigation might be pursued? And secondly, to reflect on the fact we have our first female defence secretary and how that sort of tilts balances or makes differences within the cabinet and the new appointments we've seen to that. So look, it's impossible to judge whether there'll be a criminal investigation because Neither you or I have seen the evidence. Uh, all I would say is that it is theoretically possible that Williamson himself will say he wants one because he needs his name cleared. I mean, let's be absolutely clear, none of us have ever read as damning a letter as that sent by a Prime Minister, or, or, or by a Prime Minister to a Cabinet Minister, as that one sent by Theresa May. Now, if he's got any future in politics, he has to have his name Cleared. Now, as for Penny Morton, yes, it's a historic occasion. I mean, here we are, you know, first woman defence secretary in history. There is another side of this, though, which is in just the last few years, we've had seven defence secretaries, an incredibly important department. There's been chronic instability. And what the armed forces want now 
is a bit of stability. OK, thank you very much indeed for that, Robert. We can cross now to Washington and speak to our correspondent, Emma Murphy, who's there for us tonight. And, Emma, whatever the row here over Gavin Williamson sacking, the US still has grave concerns about the potential of the UK working with Huawei. Indeed, and over the past few days, they've made no attempt to hide just how concerned they are about this potential link-up between the UK and the Chinese, describing it as being akin to handing a loaded gun to what they clearly infer would be an enemy and, as they describe them, an untrusted vendor. It is extremely strong language to be used by one nation against another. And, of course, there were also the um, claims that should this deal go ahead, the US would have to seriously consider how it shared intelligence with the UK as a result of the Chinese link-up. One of the uh, comments that came out of the State Department was that there was extreme concern about the way this was being done and any country that had any concern about human rights should seriously consider working with the Chinese in this way. Now, when we spoke to the State Department this evening, they said this was a matter for number 10, though um, they did go on to say that they would expect any country dealing um, in mobile security to do a thorough risk assessment of the security situation. Clearly, there will probably be a degree of sympathy with whoever leaked this and their position. But actually, what the US want to see is not the dismissal of whoever caused this leak. For them, this is a domestic issue, but actually this dismissal of the deal overall. Emma, thank you very much. To another politician now who definitely did not tell the truth and who is also out of a job tonight. The former Labour MP Fiona Onasanya lied about speeding. Her constituents in Peterborough have let her know what they think of that, making her the first MP in history to be expelled from Parliament by a petition. There will now be a by-election. Fiona Onasanya could choose to stand, pretty unlikely you'd think, and it has the added interest of being a Brexit-leaning marginal. Nigel Farage has already said his new Brexit party will stand in it, but not him. Two years after being hired by the people of Peterborough, tonight Fiona Onasanya has been fired by them too. The first MP to be signed out quite like this, the results of a petition posted tonight, backed by more than a quarter of her constituents, mean she can no longer sit in here. I advise the House that the petition was successful. Fiona Onasanya is no longer the member for Peterborough and the seat is accordingly vacant. She slammed the door on her own career last year when she was found guilty of lying about a speeding fine, serving four weeks in prison. But voters in Peterborough have been deciding their own penalty after their MP refused to stand down with almost 20,000 signing a recall petition since March to automatically force her out. Rather than just take the points and move on, I would have forgiven her for that, because she's only human, we're all human, but you just kept lying. And lying. And lying and, and lying. lying. And trying to frame other people, so yeah. she has to go. It's... Have you signed the petition then? Not yet. Not yet, but we will do it before five o'clock today. <laughs> you made an appointment in your diary to sign that petition. I have. She needs to go. <laughs> She has already been held responsible for all she's done. She already spent one month in prison, and there is more to a person than just the mistake they make. Well, the way she lied to the police and the courts, it just makes everybody's mind doubtful about how she would treat the normal voter. If she's going to lie to them, what chance have we got? In the end, the required number of signatures was met three times over, and so the people of Peterborough must now put their trust in a new MP meaning a by-election in a marginal seat at more than a marginally interesting time in politics. An opportunity it had been thought for this man, though he won't personally be taking it. The Brexit party will contest that by-election. Will Nigel Farage? In, N Nigel Farage will be in Brussels, possibly with a very large number of people who've never even visited the European Parliament, and my duty will be to lead that group there. I've got no choice on this. Will you be resigning, Ms. Onasanya? Fiona Onasanya could stand in the election, but having hidden from scrutiny, she's unlikely to seek it now. Paul Brand, News at 10, Peterborough. The sacking of the UK Defence Secretary is as unprecedented as it is extraordinary. Just before 6pm, a terse email dropped from Downing Street explaining that the Prime Minister had asked Gavin Williamson to leave the government, having lost confidence in his ability to serve. 
At its heart is the leaking of a National Security Council briefing that discussed the part Chinese firm Huawei might play in the evolution of Britain's 5G broadband development. He vigorously denies that he was responsible for the leak, even telling Sky News that he swore in his children's lives it wasn't him. Williamson was at one time a loyal colleague to the PM, even contributing to her leadership campaign, but was recently seen as one of those jostling to take her job. Here's Nick Watt with an evening of high political drama. With a swiftness verging on the brutal, Theresa May dispatched the man who'd installed her in number 10. Dispensing with the usual pleasantries, the Prime Minister told her former leadership campaign manager that she blamed him for a recent leak from the National Security Council. In our meeting this evening, I put to you compelling evidence suggesting your responsibility for the unauthorised disclosure. No other credible version of events to explain this leak has been identified. This was rapidly followed by a denial from the former Defence Secretary. I appreciate you offering me the option to resign, but to resign would have been to accept that I, my civil servant, my military advisers, all my staff were responsible. This was not the case. Sir, are you or any of your officials behind the Huawei leak? How are you? Uh, absolutely not. A consistent position. Gavin Williamson had been named as one of five cabinet ministers who'd raised concerns in the National Security Council about the involvement of Huawei in the new 5G network. The leak suggested that Philip Hammond had been more supportive of the Chinese telecoms giant. Earlier this year, Gavin Williamson had clashed with the Chancellor after announcing the dispatch of Britain's new warship to waters in the Pacific claimed by China. The move forced the Chancellor to cancel a visit to China. The sacking of a Defence Secretary for an alleged national security leak is unprecedented in the modern era. Tonight, friends of Gavin Williamson are rallying around him, saying it is simply not his style. Other Tories were more hostile. Referring to his dad's army nickname, one said to me, Private Pike has gone. Splendid. Splendid. One Tory defence expert called for a sense of perspective. Before we start putting this in the same category as Kim Philby, George Blake or um, any other famous Cold War spy, there is a big difference in leaking something which is highly classified, secret, technical information on the one hand, uh, or leaking something political, which is what appears to have happened in this case. And what appears to have been leaked is the fact that the Defence Secretary, the Home Secretary, the Foreign Secretary, all feel that it is, shall I say, unwise to allow a communist Chinese controlled giant telecommunications company like Huawei to worm its way into our critical infrastructure, but that, that they are nevertheless being overruled by ministers in other departments and conceivably by the first minister, the prime minister herself. A former Labour defence minister said a criminal investigation should be considered. You know, the, the most remarkable thing about this, as I say, it is not just say an environment secretary has leaked this. This is a uh, defence secretary whose daily job is to actually protect secrets and sees information on a daily basis of a highly classified nature. The idea that he thought it was wise or clever to actually uh, leak this information is just remarkable. And it's quite clear, I think, that there's got to be serious consideration that he's now prosecuted for this leak. A feeling of calm at the MOD tonight as the ship of state sails on with Britain's first woman defence secretary in Penny Morden. But the ripples from today's sacking may be felt for some time. That was Nick Water. We can go live to Downing Street now. This was quite a bold, quite a decisive move from uh, the PM, who's often quite cautious about these sort of um, dismissals, Nick.
That's right. Uh, we're often told this is a Prime Minister who has little authority and then she carries out one of the most ruthless Cabinet sackings in recent memory. But I was talking to one member of the Cabinet who was expecting this and they said that there is pretty compelling evidence against Gavin Williams and there is a feeling in government circles that he did speak to the relevant Daily Telegraph journalist on the day in question. Um, and uh, so, so with that in mind, the big question is why does the Prime Minister consider this matter closed? Why no criminal investigation and the clue to that is what this inquiry was designed to do. It was designed to restore confidence in the workings of the National Security Council and it appears that it's Gavin Williamson's behaviour since that inquiry that was set up that has led to that lack of confidence not necessarily a piece of absolute slam dunk evidence showing him as the leaker. So as a result of that um, what is Gavin Williamson saying this evening? Well, he is coming out fighting. I've been speaking to friends who say that we may well eventually find that he is the innocent victim of a great scandal. They're talking about how he fell foul of two really powerful people, the Cabinet Secretary, Sir Mark Sedwell, who led this investigation, and the Chancellor, Philip Hammond. That was uh, obviously in a row last year over defence spending. His friends uh, are saying he saved the Royal Marines uh, in, in that row. Now, friends are saying that Gavin, Gavin Williamson, yes, he did speak to the Daily Telegraph journalist, but really good journalists have multiple sources and he and his friends are absolutely adamant Gavin Williamson was not the source of this leak and I'm told that the former Defence Secretary is minded to issue this challenge to the Prime Minister. Show me the evidence you've got because I don't believe you've got it. Nick, thanks very much. Let's pick up on that. Joining us now is one of Gavin Williamson's predecessors as a chief whip, Andrew Mitchell, the Conservative MP and former member of the Armed Forces, Adam Holloway, and the UK's former National Security Advisor, Lord Ricketts. Thanks for, all for joining us. Andrew Mitchell, is it possible that he is an innocent victim of a great scandal? Well, look, this is a very serious matter indeed. Uh, leaking from this particular committee, the National Security Council, is uh, completely unacceptable. The clue is in the title that it isn't about national security. And the Prime Minister was quite right to call in the uh, apparatus of the state, uh, the intelligence service, um, the uh, cabinet secretary, and to uh, ask them to get to the bottom of it. And remember that this is the fellow who ran her leadership campaign. He um, then became her chief whip, probably the closest member of the House of Commons to a prime minister and uh, she has sacked him tonight. So she must believe she has absolutely compelling evidence, or I am sure she would not do that. But you know what it's like to not be believed when the establishment turns against you. Do you have any sympathy uh, with the idea that he might actually um, be telling the truth and he might be the victim of a botched investigation that happened too quickly? Uh, of course I have sympathy with him on a personal level. It may be that he has made an error of judgment and that he has paid a very heavy price for that. But look, you know, the people who would have conducted this investigation, uh, I've had the privilege as a minister of working with our intelligence services, they are the very best of the very best and they would not have served up to the Prime Minister uh, any evidence which led her to this conclusion, given her closeness to the man she was going to sack, unless they were absolutely certain of the ground on which they stood. This idea that Sitwell could have been out to get him, that there was sort of political bad blood between the two of them, does that sit well with what you know of either side? I really don't think that is a credible argument. Uh, he is not only the Cabinet Secretary, he is also the National Security Advisor. And I just don't think uh, he would play games in that way. This is incredibly serious. You cannot conduct the security, the national security of the state, on the basis that people are leaking. And uh, I think that the Prime Minister was right to call in the Cabinet Secretary. He was right to use all the electronic and other assets of the state to be sure that he came to a conclusion, he got to the bottom of this, and events have then taken their course. Let me just pick up, I'm going to talk to Peter Ricketts in a second, um, who can tell us about the national security side of things. But Adam, I wonder if you, Holloway, if you find it ironic that we're always um, hearing from your party how dangerous Jeremy Corbyn is to national security and tonight it sounds like it was right in the centre of Cabinet. Well, well I, I mean, I think, I think there are two really important issues here. One is the fact that the current political class 
really doesn't seem to be up to the job, whether it's over this and national security or Brexit or much else. And secondly, how Huawei itself is actually an arm of the Chinese state. And so whoever leaked this, of course, they shouldn't have done. But, you know, actually, this is very important stuff. I mean, we're the only one of the Five Eyes countries who are even considering having this backdoor technology. And it's very, very dangerous, both those points, political class and Huawei. You, you seem to be sort of, you know, ambivalent or straddling two horses there. When you talk about the current political class, do you genuinely think the cabinet isn't up to the job? Yeah, I think we've ended up um, in a strange position where politics has sort of become almost a game. Um, I don't think we have the seriousness of, of generations before. People tend, I think, nowadays to rise in politics precisely because they demonstrate the good qualities of, of followers rather than leadership. People won't go very far in politics if they, if they demonstrate moral courage, ideas, conviction, the ability to cop people into teams. You were in the armed forces. Did he have the support and the confidence of the armed forces? Well, I, I don't know. I just think most of the cabinet would be very unlikely to rise to the rank of general. And that's across, right across parliament now. Because as I say, if you want to rise, you have to act like a good follower. And then you see people popping up at, at the very top with none of the qualities of leadership, blinking faced with the challenge. You know, we're seeing it right now with the Prime Minister. Uh, Peter Ricketts, um, Adam Holloway weighs, raised an interesting point, which is, you know, we are talking about a leak about Huawei at the centre of this, uh, a company that many people would have qualms about. Maybe he was right, if he did leak it, to bring it to the surface. Well, he wasn't right to do a leak of any kind, because this was a body that we set up in 2010, when David Cameron came into government, as the place where ministers and their most senior officials can talk about the most sensitive state secrets. And as soon as you get to a position where people can feel that they can walk out, maybe they've lost an argument around the table, and instead of keeping their mouth shut, go off and brief the press to try and preempt a government announcement, then the National Security Council isn't going to work. But, but you've just said it. This wasn't a state secret. This was just a government announcement. I mean, surely you treat that differently, don't no, you? Because the argumentation that was going on around the table will have been drawing on intelligence information. Uh, they're weighing up uh, the, our security interests in China against our economic interests. There has to be a safe space where ministers can do that, where they can take the most sensitive information and decide what the policy is going to be on the basis of it. That's why it's so toxic because it will have sent a signal to the intelligence professionals and the civil service that political infighting was polluting even our national security you think discussions. think it changes the way the NSC works? Well, I, it's the first time in nine years that there's been a serious leak out of the NSC. It was a place where people could be confident that secrets would be kept. This was very toxic, and I'm glad that the Prime Minister has moved decisively to show that she's not prepared to tolerate leaking. Has she moved decisively enough? I well, mean, she seems to be closing the door to any further investigation or, or police investigation. And I don't know why she's doing that. I mean, on the face of it, this is a breach of the Official Secrets Act. All the ministers and officials around the table will have signed that. Uh, so I, it seems to me that um, the police ought to be considering, is there a case to be considered there? It would be for the Director of Public Prosecutions to make the decision, not ministers. But the key thing is she sent a very strong deterrent signal that discussions in the NSC have got to stay confidential, even if in our current state of politics pretty much everything else out of Cabinet and so on gets leaked. Uh, Andrew Mitchell, I wonder if you agree with your colleague Adam Holloway that this is so endlessly damaging, even this kind of fast move from the Prime Minister just sort of redirects the gaze to the chaos that is literally live within her own cabinet, her own most trusted colleagues. Well, this is not a good time for British politics, uh, for Parliament and for the government, and we've got to get through it. But I agree with Lord Ricketts. The position that has been investigated is a very serious matter. It's not about Huawei. It's about leaking from the National Security Committee. And that is simply not acceptable. And that's why the government and the Prime Minister were absolutely right to take it extremely seriously, use all the apparatus they could, and get to a resolution, which does appear to have happened tonight. It's quite hard to find supporters, friends of Gavin Williamson tonight. I wonder if you think there was a sort of a vague snobbery about all the, you know, the tarantulas and the, you know, whatever it was, the private pike and um, the shut up and go away stuff. Do you think, do you think people well, decided well, early that he wasn't up to the job well, and well, shut I, the door on him? Well, I think, you know, we do have a problem with where people get great officers of state when they haven't had a great track record of achievement elsewhere. But actually, to stick up for Gavin Williamson, you know, my friends from when I was in the army who are now generals actually say that they were pleasantly surprised about how he performed and that he did actually stick up for the armed forces. But I do think it is crazy to suggest that 
Mark Sedwell might have approached this in some sense as a, a personal grudge match with a minister. And he's a highly professional civil servant in the most exposed position in the country as a civil servant. This was a very, very serious charge, and I am quite sure he will have approached it professionally. And if, as a result of this, the Huawei part in the deal of 5G goes ahead, we move swiftly on, is that a resolution that you will welcome? Well, first of all, of course, we don't know what the government's position is, because this leak is a partial account of the argument. We're still waiting to see what the announcement is. And, indeed, Huawei already exists in our telecoms network. The issue is, how much more do we add to it? Adam Huawei is, is like the East India Company. It is an arm of the Chinese state. Major Ren, who set it up, is a member of the, of the uh, uh, People's uh, Liberation Army beforehand, a member of the National Congress of the Communist Party. His so start-up money from the Chinese state. he have been doing Chinese us all state. a favour by just letting that Well, we, don't know, that we, he know did. That we don't know that he did it, of course. But these are two separate things. The fact you have an environment where cabinet ministers leak and the fact that we're in danger of being the only member of the Five Eyes incorporating this technology just when we're going into the Internet of Things where even your printer tells Hewlett-Packard how many bits of paper you use. This yeah. is bonkers. OK. I mean, that's Thank an argument all. that we should uh, have, but it's not about leaking from the NSC. Thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. A little earlier, I spoke to Labour's Shadow Defence Minister, Nia Griffiths, and I asked her what she made of such a dramatic sacking. Well, quite frankly, it's a very shocking thing to have done. And I think we are you know, deeply disturbed that a member of the National Security Council should be leaking information. He says he didn't do it. Well, quite clearly, there's a real problem. I mean, this is a place where the absolute utmost intelligence, you know, the, the top security items are discussed. And it should be a place where that can be done freely without the members there being worried that somebody is leaking. And so clearly there's a real breakdown in discipline. And Theresa May now needs to take absolutely firm action. And quite frankly, I think she needs to call in the police and have a full investigation because we are talking about actually breaking the um, Official Secrets Act. And actually, there may well be um, a case to answer here. It sounds like she shut it down. She said it's not going to go any further. There won't be a police inquiry. Well, that's why we are calling for her to come to Parliament tomorrow and make a proper statement so that we can ask her exactly what is going on and what she intends to do about it, because this has really undermined confidence in the government and confidence in her as Prime Minister, not just here in the UK, but, of course, amongst our allies as well. But he didn't leak anything sensitive. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? He, he might have leaked a bit of government policy that wasn't known, but it wasn't like that was classified information itself. Well, I think the point is, when you have a discussion of that nature, you want to have that discussion in absolute confidence that you know that nobody there is going to leak that information. So you can discuss freely some very sensitive issues, and you can have that discussion in a proper adult manner, and you can have proper briefings from the security services. Otherwise, they're going to have to limit what they can, what they can can brief you on. Do you think what he did was treacherous? I think it was absolutely treacherous, both to the country but also to the Prime Minister. If you're going to run a government, you need loyalty from your ministers, you need loyalty from your cabinet, and particularly, obviously, those who take part in the National Security Council. And it just shows that, quite frankly, we have here a case of yet another uh, Tory minister putting leadership ambition uh, before the good of the country. Unless you say that the substance of this was his concerns over Huawei's involvement in the 5G network. Now, if you believe, as many do, that Huawei is an arm of the Chinese state, isn't it right to be concerned about that? It, there's a proper way of doing it, and that is internally. That is within that National Security Council, and that is by talking to the Prime Minister directly. It is not by going to the press and leaking. That is not a way to what make if government policy. Prime Minister doesn't listen. It, it's not a way to make government policy. It's not a way to effectively blackmail the government into doing something. People are about to go to the polls. I mean, <laughs> literally mm -hmm. tomorrow. Um, I wonder if people just think, you know, there's a leak, there's the inquiry, it's the politics of the thick of it, and we're just going to face a plague on all your houses. You know, all politics feels a bit rotten at the moment here. I, I think it really does undermine people's confidence in government when they see this sort of thing happening. And I think that is the detriment of all of us, because, yes, it does undermine uh, what's going on. It also reminds people that the government is not concentrating on the issues that they really worry about. They worry about the number of police on their streets, they worry about the health service, they worry about the money the councils don't have to provide the local services. And what they're seeing is a, is a government riven with division 
and leadership ambition and not actually getting on with the job of making their lives better. Lee Griffiths, thank you. Thanks very much. We'll return to this story in a few moments. We're going to take you back to our main story tonight. Gavin Williamson has provided the photojournalists with a lifetime of colour and material. He entered politics with his pet tarantula, became known as Private Pike, and along the way got too close to the heat in his former role as a fireplace salesman. He'll be missed by the sketch writers, at least, if not entirely, for his role in shaping defence policy. Here's Michael Cockrell. I first met Gavin Williamson when he was David Cameron's bag carrier or parliamentary private secretary. He saw himself as a Machiavellian practitioner of the dark arts of politics. Every week, Williamson would circulate Tory backbenchers with helpful questions for them to ask at Prime Minister's question time. Ahead of PMQs, we get an email, it's just come through at 11.06, and these are some suggested topics that would be helpful, the Prime Minister would be happy to receive a question on. <laughs> so, so which of these, this is a... Uh, an email from the Prime Minister's parliamentary party yes. suggesting questions yeah, suggesting that you as Conservative MPs yeah, can exactly. When Theresa May stood for the leadership after Cameron's resignation, Gavin Williamson managed her successful campaign and he later reportedly boasted, I put her in and I can take her out. Williamson had become like a favourite son and Mrs May made him chief whip, the government's keeper of the secrets. In his office, he kept a pet tarantula to intimidate rebellious MPs, and he called it Cronus, after the Greek god who castrated his own father. I don't much like the stick, but it is amazing what can be achieved with a sharpened carrot. Williamson negotiated the deal with the DUP, which kept her in power after she lost her majority in the calamitous 2017 election. Mrs May brought him into the Cabinet as Defence Secretary, where he became notorious for his gaffes, like his message to the Russians after the Skripal poisoning. Frankly, Russia should go away, it should shut up. Do you regret using very casual Trump-esque language like shut up and go away? Please don't tell me what happened, because we know what happened. Do you regret using that language? That is the question. Well, what, what was right is actually we came together with our allies and oh, made it absolutely right. clear okay. to Russia that right, they couldn't no, okay. act okay. in the, that right. behaviour. And All I right. think in, that was the right, right. thing to Interview do. Interview terminated because you won't answer the question. Right. So Among the military, Williamson was mockingly nicknamed Private Pike and it was his inability to answer a straight question from the Cabinet Secretary about the Huawei leak that cost him the job he relished. Michael Cockrell, we're going to take a look at tomorrow's papers now. There's only one story dominating the headlines. As you can see from the six or so pictured there, it's the sacking of Gavin Williamson. We're joined now to discuss the fallout of his departure by the former Director of Communications at Downing Street, Craig Oliver, the Deputy Political Editor of The Spectator, Katie Balls, and The Times Defence Correspondent, Lucy Fisher. Worth just stating, as we've been mentioning Huawei, the company does, of course, deny any wrongdoing and has said allegations that it uses its technology are smears to spy our smears. Um, Katie, can I begin with you? Do you feel you know Gavin Williamson quite well? You're one of the journalists that's often credited with sort of understanding, getting under his skin a bit better than many. Well, I think he's someone who, I mean, come across for a long time now. He's risen through the Conservative Party and I've followed that. And I think ultimately the news today of his sacking has taken Westminster by surprise. And that's partly because lots of people think, thought Theresa May didn't necessarily have the political capital to sack a minister, mm -hmm. <laughs> particularly one who she has had such a close relationship to, a former chief whip, someone who helped of her leadership campaign. It's quite hard to find voices coming out in support. It, often that, that tells you more, doesn't it? The absence of support for a minister. I think it can do. I do think that there are lots of people trying to wait to see what exactly is the evidence behind this, this the reasoning behind Number 10's decision. You have seen a couple of MPs, Nadine Doris for one, come out and question whether Theresa May has treated him well. I wouldn't say the chorus is that loud, but I am sensing some unease amongst Tory MPs as to whether there is specific evidence or if it's a case of something being circumstantial. Craig, just talk us through the anatomy of a sacking. We've used this word unprecedented. It does feel particularly brutal. Why? 
It, I think it's brutal because I think there's a point at which government feels that we can't take this anymore. When I was in number 10, there was a spad in the Home Office who slagged off Michael Gove and then leaked a letter from Theresa May about Michael Gove at 1am on a Twitter feed. And we felt very strongly that we just cannot continue in a situation where this kind of thing is going on in the government. And if we let it pass, then discipline will just be completely out of control. I think that that's what's going on in number 10 tonight. They feel that the NSC is actually quite a precious thing. The ability for the Chief of the Defence Staff, the head of MI5 and MI6 to come into a room and feel that what they say is safe and protected needs to be protected. And I think that that's what's gone on today. But the protocol is normally a resignation, isn't it? A nicely framed resignation. Here's your letter, sign it. And it comes back. I mean, this was this was not that. This was a you're out of here. Yes, it's extraordinary. And I think that this word compelling is going to be absolutely crucial. What does number 10 define as compelling evidence? And do they actually have the thing that can prove prove that prove that he did it or not? I think the other thing that's interesting that's coming out tonight is that there's this kind of idea that somehow number 10 and Mark said, well, are in this conspiracy theory against Gavin Williamson. This is nonsense. The idea that the day before the local election vote, that you were going to conspire to get rid of your defence secretary. You might do it on the Friday after to cover up the story then, but to do it the day before, this is just nonsense. And I think it's a sign of how febrile things are. Lucy, what is your sense from within the MOD tonight? Are people shocked, delighted, in tears? Well, I think there's been a lot said about the gaffes that Gavin Williamson has made, but I think there was a real sense uh, among a lot of the top brass that he was really committed to the ministry. You know, he fought hard to win 1.8 billion um, over two years um, for the department. He was ambitious for particularly the Royal Navy, talking about the global Britain strategy that would see the aircraft carrier going east of Suez. Um, and he's also tried to overrun some of the over, uh, very wieldy uh, procurement processes with cheaper ways of developing technology-led uh, kit. So I think that there will be people who um, thought he was less statesmanlike than perhaps some of his predecessors and will be glad to see um, Penny Mordaunt coming in. But I also think there will be people who, who will be lamenting his demise. And will Theresa May be one of them? I mean, when you remove her from her position of having to fight him, she's lost an ally that, what, you know, brought in the DUP arrangement, right? Yeah, I, I think the, the problem here is Theresa May has relied on Gavin Williamson heavily since getting into number 10. And even up until a few months ago, when there have been crunch moments, confidence votes against her, I think Gavin Williamson has been in her inner circle. And I think that is something she is going to miss. And if the Tory party have to renegotiate a confidence and supply agreement with the DUP, mm. Gavin Williamson and some of the DUP actually do get on with and there's not that many figures in cabinet that they do and I think there is a point where they will miss his you know his efforts and his ability. Adam Holloway raised this interesting point he just said that the whole caliber of the cabinet is lacking I mean he said across the political class is that something you feel widely you know you look at the cabinet and just think most of them aren't up to the job. I think there are some strong people in cabinet and I do think that it does, there is a wide view that is this one of the strongest cabinets it's been for a while. No. I think a lot of people when Gavin Williamson was made Defence Secretary thought very good chief whip, a guy who understands the commons, understands what motivates MPs incredibly well. Is this guy really the Defence Secretary? And when he was making jokes about sharpened carrots and telling Russia to, you know, go away and shut up and that kind of thing, a lot of people thought, hold on a minute, this is a very, very serious job in government. There are Who's a lot of people. To? I mean, what was that about, do you think? Well, I think that he thought that somehow that this would play well, this would show that he was a character. I think a, the Conservative Party, you know, got a strong military background, feels Defence Secretary should take the job incredibly seriously, should look very, very much the part. Now I think Lucy makes a good point, it's fair to say he did do some things that were quite serious and won over some of the generals, but he also did some things that looked immature, looked like you know, you're know you not really playing the part of the Defence Secretary very well. And I also just think on Katie's point, I think number 10 fell out with Gavin Williamson quite a while ago. I don't think it, recently he's been saying, you know, that a long time ago he said I made her and I can break her. That sense of distrust has been there for quite a long time, I think. What's the job ahead for Penny Mordaunt now? I mean, she takes on the Defence Secretary role. Does she have to carry on what he's been doing but in a different manner or can she completely re re-establish that job? Well, the big question facing her is money. The 10-year um, defence equipment budget is facing a black hole uh, for funding of £14 billion. Um, she's also got to continue developing policy on boosting Britain's resilience in the face of threats from Russia and China. 
And then I also think uh, she's got to look ahead to really trying to boost NATO, which uh, earlier this month had a very muted 70th um, birthday celebration in Washington. The next big summit is in December uh, in London, so she'll be working towards that and fostering international alliances. I mean, those international alliances, w w you know, we're, we often hear from Europe what they think, for example, of Boris Johnson. What did America, China, Russia think of Gavin Williamson? Well, interestingly, he had a fantastic relationship with Jim Mattis. Um, uh, and that was sort of um, a fascinating thing because they're quite different characters. With Patrick Shanahan, the acting US Defence Secretary, interestingly, he was due to come to London for two days on Friday, a trip that was cancelled, the Pentagon uh, suggested, mm. at midday today. So um, un unclear <laughs> they probably quite knew. why... Uh, Does this happened. alter anything that happens tomorrow? I mean, we're sort of getting quite used to weird things happening on the eve of local elections, you know. D does it sort of change anything? I mean, I think if you want to find bad press for the Tories nowadays, it's not very difficult. This might be an additional reason, but I think there's already so many problems when it comes to the local elections that the Tories won't be able to blame a bad result just on what's happened here with Gavin Williamson. And it feels like we're living in a time where we're so used to the world shaking beneath Westminster's feet that we look back historically and say, well, that would not be sustainable. And actually, we're learning it can be sustainable for much longer. And actually the key point here, I think, for Theresa May is she's so shown herself to be somebody who's willing to take any amount of humiliation in order to keep going and just keep herself in the game with the possibility of de delivering Brexit. And I think that that's the really extraordinary fact is what you're seeing is a prime minister who's willing to take a huge amount of humiliation. Does it make any difference to how she delivers Brexit, any of this? I mean, this is quite an old-fashioned story, isn't it, for it our It injects age? more poison into the Conservative Party, and the issues between MPs at the moment are very serious. But I think we now have Penny Morden, a committed Brexiteer in a very senior position, ahead of potentially crunch cabinets on a potential customs union. And you also have Gavin Williamson, who knows this government inside out on the backbenches, mm. where he could cause Theresa May trouble. Thank you all very much indeed.